Santorini volcano, the Aegean Sea, what's going on under the surface? We probed with sound to learn to learn more. This is by Emil Hoff, Associate Professor of Earth Sciences and Volcanology Cluster of Excellence, Oregon Hazards Lab, University of Oregon, on the conversation. We know that the Thera volcano of Santorini, they say, could have been what erupted during the time of the Exodus. Moses and the tribes of Israel from ancient Egypt. Now, the island of Santorini in the Mediterranean, in the Aegean Sea of Greece, has attracted people for thousands of years. Today, it feels magical to watch the sunset from cliffs over the deep bay, surrounded by cobalt blue churches and whitewashed houses. This mystical place attracts about 2 million tourists every year, making it one of the top destinations in Greece. Not all those visitors recognize that Santorini is an active volcano. In 1600 BC, the volcano exploded and collapsed, leaving behind an almost circular hole. This is the caldera, visible today as a bay filled with seawater and lined by cliffs. The large explosion covered a Bronze Age town, burying buildings in volcanic ash two stories deep. And I have to say that uh, no... Uh, no human relics were found there, which means that they had ample uh, warnings to uh, be able to flee the area. They were able to evacuate the area so that there were no victims. All right, so going back to the article, the latest lava flows erupted in 1950 and expanded the islands that have grown at the center of the caldera. Recently, the 2011-12 Volcano, the volcano went through a period of unrest. The ground bulged up and out, and many small earthquakes occurred. Scientists concluded that a small amount of magma was injected about two and a half miles or four kilometers under the northern portion of the caldera. What attracted me to this iconic place is that most of the volcano is submerged underwater. I'm a geophysicist interested in how magma moves deep in the earth. Over the past decade, I've been using advanced technology to improve how we see magma's otherwise hidden pathways below volcanoes around the world. Using sound to see what's beneath the surface, in the 1780s, French scientist Ferdinand Fouquet traveled to Santorini, that's 1780, to view an ongoing eruption. He was the first to realize how the volcanic surface depression known as a caldera was formed. As magma emptied out of its underground reservoir during the eruption, the roof of rock that had been covering it collapsed. The flanks of the volcano that remained formed the ring of the islands visible above water today. My research project aimed at de to develop deeper, literally, than what we can see from the surface to figure out what's going on within this still active volcano. A blanket of water over everything except the very top of the Santorini volcano meant I could use deep penetrating marine sound sources to illuminate the sur subsurface structure. My international collaborators and I wanted to find the location and depth where magma was collecting and how much magma there is there right now. We conducted our work from the RV Marcus Langseth, an American marine seismic ship. It's the only academic ship with a sound source capable of imaging the, deep inside, the de depth inside of a, of a volcano. This technology is controversial because of the potential impact of loud sounds on marine wildlife and its intensive use by oil exploration companies. We spent months doing environmental permitting and finding an optimal design for the experiment. The ship carried a team of experienced biological observers who surveyed the sea both above and below water for sound sensitive or endangered species. If any were observed at a distance, we were to follow a prescribed set of actions to ensure they would not be disturbed. After all this preparation, we thought though we, th we uh, saw almost no wildlife during the expedition. Our active source seismic imaging method is like making a CAT scan picture of the inside of the earth. Instead of building an image using x-rays though, we use sound waves generated by 36 heavy metal canisters called air guns that are towed deep in the water behind the ship. When the air guns open, compressed air pushes on the seawater, 
creating a sound wave that travels through the earth. In this instance, the sound travels to the rocks beneath the volcano, then seismic sensors resting on the seafloor on the other side of the volcano record when the sound reaches them. The team installed 65 of these stations on land across Santorini and the nearby islands and dropped another 90 stations to the seafloor. We have to use very accurate timing to measure how long it takes the sound energy to go through the different parts of a volcano. The energy from the sound source will travel more slowly through rocks that are broken or that are hot and contain magma. When we probe the structure from many different directions and at many different depths, we can recover a detailed picture of the interior of the Earth. To get the data back from the seafloor, we spend a special sound signal to the sensor, like a bird call, that commands the instrument to drop its anchor. Then everyone scans the sea looking for the instrument. During the day, we search for a cheerful orange flag, and at night, a strobe light makes its task easier. Our ship maneuvers alongside the instrument, and a crew member leans over the side, hooks the instrument on a long pole, pulls it back on board, and the data is in hand. Filling out the subsurface picture. Analysis of the seismic data is an enormous task. It required experienced inspection by PhD student Beth Heath, Ben Heath, and master student Brenna McVeigh. We then used seismic tomography to make the first detailed photographs of Santorini subsurface structure. The term tomography comes from the word, uh, Greek words tomos for slice and graphos for draw. Basically, sophisticated computer code makes a three-dimensional digital model of the object of interest based on the speed sound waves traveling through it. Surprisingly, we found an narrow zone of collapsed rock hiding within the broad caldera at Santorini. Geological studies of the eruptions at Santorini had not led us to expect there would be a confined volume of rocks in the northern part of the caldera that sound traveled through more slowly. The rather, we thought the entire caldera would be filled with this type of broken rock at shallow depths. Our findings meant that the collapsed portion of the caldera was much narrower and deeper than it appears from the surface. This column of disrupted rock is less than two miles across, small compared to the size of the six-mile-wide caldera. The structure goes down into the ground two miles below the bottom of the bay. These rocks must contain lots of water-filled gaps to have sufficiently slowed the seismic energy we recorded. To figure out how this unique volume of disrupted rock formed, we drew on existing knowledge of Santorini's most recent large explosion, the late Bronze Age eruption of 1630 BC. As magma erupted from the subsurface, it caused the overlying rocks to break up. At the same time, underground explosions fractured the rocks when magma and water came into contact. Then above this collapsed column, the seafloor depression filled with porous volcanic deposits from the eruption itself. Finally, the entire bay dropped down and rapid flooding formed a tsunami wave. What's particularly interesting about our findings is that magma continues to accumulate directly beneath the column of disrupted rock for thousands of years after this explosion that originally created the caldera. My colleagues and I think the rising magma comes to a halt beneath the reduced weight of the broken rock in the collapsed column. Our research helps explain how magma systems are re reset and regrow after major volcanic episodes. This is on the conversation. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. 
and we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.